Port Moresby is in the territory of Papua and New Guinea and lies about seven degrees below the equator. It's a strange place where the unexpected often happens. For instance, the afternoon the box arrived. A box whose contents were to alter the whole concept of oil exploration. It was a very large box, certainly the largest ever seen in Port Moresby, and it caused much speculation and comment. Slowly, it was hauled away to its first destination, the headquarters of an oil company, a few miles distant from the town. was it, a helicopter to carry great loads of equipment, in fact a whole oil rig, right into the thick heart of the jungle. An operation never attempted before on such a scale. How's it going? Okay, just off on test. Think she'll lift nearly two tons? She doesn't, we're in dead trouble. First time a lift of this size has been tried by helicopter. Everything from the draw works to a packet of vitamin pills. How much altogether? Over 2,000 tons. Over 200 miles away, far across the Gulf of Papua, a ship was already carrying much of the stores and equipment as far upriver as possible. The plan was for a helicopter to lift the oil rig and all the men and stores necessary to keep it going to a spot in the jungle called Sereru, the place where it had been decided to drill for oil. Slowly, the Papuan explorer threaded its way up the treacherous river until it reached one of the oil company's permanent camps, Middletown. Beyond Middletown, the river is too shallow for the Papuan explorer to go further, and its cargo was transshipped to a smaller vessel. This shallow craft would carry the rig and all that went with it to a camp further up the river called Victory Junction, the nearest possible point to the proposed rig site at Sireru. This vessel, the Gabuna, was to make many trips up and down river before the operation started. At Victory Junction, a small camp had already been established. Here would be the base depot for everything. Here, much of the machinery required would be broken down into convenient loads for the helicopter. A thousand loads, two tons at a time. Here, men would work in the stifling heat until the operation was completed. From Victory Junction, the actual site for the rig at Sireru was 17 miles away in a straight line. And in between, thick forest and swamp. But before anything could happen, a team of men had to fight through this tangled mass of jungle to establish the site, to break down a clearing among the towering trees of the rainforest. This was the very first job that had to be done.
Papuan weather is unpredictable. Good flying conditions can turn to thick storm in a matter of minutes. So apart from the main clearing at Sireru, emergency clearings had to be made every mile in a straight line between Victory Junction and Sireru. In case of trouble, the pilot could safely put down the helicopter in a few seconds. And now came its first job. 17 tons of bulldozer, which had been broken down into its various parts to be flown in to finish clearing and levelling the rig site at Sirero. It took 10 trips to bring all the pieces of bulldozer to Sirero and 36 hours to assemble it. Pushing and tearing at tree stumps and boulders, it started to level the man-made clearing in the forest. Meanwhile, at Victory Junction, more and more equipment was arriving by river. Huge and cumbersome pieces of machinery being weighed and stacked, waiting for the moment Sirero was prepared to receive them. And at last, everything was ready. The helicopter would be tested to maximum effort. The big lift was about to begin. At the Sirero rig site, all had been mapped out ready. The helicopter's job was to put the pieces into place. It was a mobile crane in the sky, a sky hook.
pieces fell into place so fast at Cerrero that the men at Victory Junction were often hard put to keep pace. There was the additional problem of supplies. Cerrero could not live without the skyhook. Everything, food, medicine, even a tube of toothpaste had to be flown in from Victory Junction. Meanwhile, working to a carefully preconceived plan, the lift went steadily on. By now, the skyhook had lifted more than 1,500 tons. After nearly four weeks of continuous flying over treacherous country and through worsening weather, the Skyhook had flown in most of the actual rig itself. The Skyhook had established Cerrero in a fraction of the time it would have taken to build a road. Even if road building had been possible in such territory and under such conditions. The scheme was nearly complete. The men at Cerrero, Europeans and Papuans, finished the giant assembly and a few days later, the mast was ready to be raised to the drilling position, pulled up to the sky by the power of its own engines. Engines which only a short time before, the skyhook had flown in, two tons at a time. This was a crucial moment for the oil men. was up, an oil rig set in the heart of the Papuan jungle, ready to drill deep into the earth in its search for oil. And while the oil men at Cerrero drilled, the skyhook would be there, feeding and maintaining them for as long as the camp existed. And not only at Cerrero, but at other inaccessible sites on the map with strange names like Bwaka, Ira, or Komewu. Isolated corners which only a helicopter can reach. The helicopter is giving a new look to oil exploration in the remote places of our world. Mm -hmm. 